Welcome to the UGC lecture series. This is the EPG Patishala lecture series on computer science and we are talking about the paper machine learning. So, in this module we will be talking about hidden Markov model. We have looked at the basics of hidden Markov model in the last module. Today we are going to look at some interesting aspects of how hidden Markov model has to be modeled. Okay. So, that is what we are going to look in this uh, particular module. So, these are the people uh, responsible for the development of this particular module. And now let us look at the learning objectives associated with this module. The first learning objective is to understand the three issues of HMM modeling, hidden Markov modeling. There are three problems as it is it called or questions or issues or whatever it is associated with HMM. Then we are going to explain for one of those issues how the, the Baum Walsh Welsh algorithm is used. Okay. And then we are going to look at the second issue here which is uh, decoding for which we are going to discuss the Viterbi algorithm. The third issue will be discussed in the next module not in this module. So, uh, the key uh, words associated with this uh, particular module are uh, forward uh, probability, backward probability and the trellis diagram. Let us do a small recap of the hidden Markov model. A hidden Markov model is an extension of the Markov model in which the input uh, symbols are not the same as the states. In the Markov model, the input symbols and the uh, states are the same. So, you, what you see is what you get, but in the hidden Markov model, we do not know which state we are in. That is the state is hidden, only the observation is given. So, we are going one more level of abstraction. For example, a typical example of explaining HMM was pause tagging or the part of speech tagging where the input symbols are the words and the states are the part of speech, speech tags. So, we see only the part of speech tags. So, the Markov assumption that we will be doing is um, the state transition that we do from one, uh, one to the other transition is dependent upon only the origin and the destination not on other things. There is another output independent assumption all observation frames are dependent on the state that generated them not on the other observation frames. So, we are only bothered about the observation is based on the state it is not based on what was previously observed or neighboring, uh, neighboring uh, states gave. So, these are some ass assumptions we make if we have to model it model this uh, any problem using hidden Markov model. So, in this particular uh, module we are more bothered about how we decide on the parameters of HMM we will come to that. So, first let us discuss some of these uh, parameters one is states. So, uh, the hidden Markov model will be associated with the set of states S which will be S, S1, S2 to Sn which will be the number of states. Then comes the transition probability. The transition probability uh, will give me uh, normally represented as A11, A12 to An yet, where Aij represents the probability of making a transition. What is the probability of going from one state Si or uh, making a transition from a state Si to a state Sj? So, that is called as transition probability. Next, we have what is called e emission probability, which is a set B of functions of the form. B i o t which is the probability of observation what is the probability of observing the o t at a particular time the t is associated with the time of observing t when we are in the state s i. So, what is the probability observing o at t given that we are in the state s i. So, that is called the emission probability and then we have an initial state probability called pi of i that is the probability that one of the states we remember we have S1 to Sn states what is the probability of each of this state being an initial state. So, that is called the initial state distribution and uh, m is the, the number of distinct observation symbol per state. So, each state can be associated for example, if you take pause tag this particular noun can be associated with so many distinct observations that is the m normally m does not come too much into our picture. So, the two model parameters that we talk about are n and m, n is the number of states and m is the number of uh, distinct observation symbols associated per state and there are three probability measures a the transition probability, b the emission probability the emission of a observation symbol from the state S i give at a time t and then you have a um, initial state distribution which is the probability that a state psi can be the initial state. So, these are the three probability measures. These are the parameters of an HMM. So, just to recap you have S, K, Pi A B, Pi A B are the um, S, S 1 to S n are the values of the hidden states, V 1 to V m are the values V m are the values of the observation or K 
or whatever uh, and then uh, yes uh, and pi a b are the 3 probabilities ok. So, we are more bothered about the probabilities pi are the initial state probabilities a i j are the state transition probabilities and b i k are the observation state probabilities or the emission probabilities as it is called. Now, these are the 3 problems or issues that is normally associated with HMM. The problem 1 is evaluation, you compute the probability of a given observation sequence. So, you are given an observation sequence, compute the probability that observation sequence will come given the, uh, the model. The second problem is decoding, we will go a little more in detail as we go along. Given an observation uh, sequence, compute the most likely hidden state sequence. Now, please note what is the meaning of this in terms of pause tagging. Remember, part of speech tagging is you have words and you have the part of speech tags. Now, the words were the observation, the part of speech tags are the states. So, compute the probability of a given uh, observation sequence means the man eats the uh, carrot. So, what is the probability that that particular sentence will come? And given that that the man eats the carrot, what is the probability that the determiner man is now eats his verb, the determiner carrot is now. So, what is the probability that uh, this is the most likely hidden, hidden uh, state sequence. I have told the correct one, but we have to find that out. So, that is the decoding problem. So, the tagging problem okay, is actually the decoding problem. And you have a third problem also which is called learning. Given the observation sequence and a set of possible models, which of the models fits the data, which means you have to find the model parameters. Okay. So, that is the hardest problem to solve that we will not be discussing in this module, we will be discussing in the next module. So, in this module we will be discussing evaluation and decoding. Okay. Now, before we go into that, let us see how an observation sequence can be built. Given the above 5 elements, we can build the observation sequence zero, uh, O is equal to O1, O2, to OT, where T is the number of observation. This observation sequence is built as following. You set the time t is equal to 1, choose an initial state q i is equal to s i according to the initial probability distribution. Then choose o t is equal to v k according to the symbol probability distribution. Okay. According to the symbol probability means what is the probability at that state s i this particular symbol comes. Then you have to transit to a new state according as uh, s j according to the state transition probability and then you set t is equal to t plus 1 and then go back and find out which is the next observation according to the symbol probability distribution and then you keep going which is the next state and so on till t is less than or equal to capital T which is the number of observations. So, this is basically building an observation sequence. Uh, so, here we assume we know everything so we can build the sequence. We have discussed this a little bit with a small urn example in the previous module. Now, so as we again said these are the 3 discussions uh, or the 3 issues, problems, questions. So, the first problem is evaluation. So, we are given the observation, we are given the observation sequence O1, O2 to OT and we are given the model. What is the meaning of we have given the model lambda? That means, we are given all the probabilities required. We are given the initial probability of each and every state, we are given the transition probability from one state to the other, we are given the emission probability also. So, if you reach up this cell, what is the, uh, what will be emitted? So, we want to compute the probability of the sequence given the model. So, that is the problem. So, the probability of the sequence is what you, we want and this is done by the forward backward dynamic programming algorithm which is called the bomb welch algorithm. So, we will be discussing this algorithm. The problem second problem is decoding. So, given the observation sequence 0 I mean O is equal to O1 to OT and the HMM model. Uh, lambda equal to a b pi. Remember a is the transition, b is the emission and pi is the initial probability. How do we find the state sequence that best e explains observation? Previously, we said that what is the probability of that sequence? Here we are saying that we, we want to find the best state sequence that gives me these observations. Okay. So, again what is the probability of that set of words coming is what we do during evaluation. What is the probability of these uh, given that observation, what is the probability maximum in which say state sequence will give me the best probability is what we are trying to find out here. So, compute the most probable sequence of states given the sequence of observation and the model and this is done by what is called the vertebrae dynamic programming algorithm. 
and the third problem which we are going to discuss in the next module is how do we adjust the model parameters. What are the model parameters? The model parameters are the transition probability, the emission probability and the initial probability such that given the model the probability of uh, observing that um, uh, sequence is the maximum. So, learn the best model given the observation. This is done by what is called the expectation maximization heuristic, the EM heuristic. So, these are the three major algorithm, baum welch algorithm, the Vertebi algorithm and the expectation maximization heuristic. So, for evaluation that is finding the probability of the observation sequence is the done using the baum welch Finding out the best probable sequence of states given the observation and the model is done using decoding uh, that is decoding using vertebi and then given the data given the observation we adjust the parameters that such that you get the best model that is done using the expectation expectation maximization heuristic we have looked at the fundamentals of expectation maximization previously here we are going to look at how it is used in hidden mark model but not in this module we are going to talk about this in the next module now before we go along we said that hmm has to uh, uh, the assumption of a marco assumption the Marco assumption states that the probability of the occurrence of the observation is a word w i at time t depends only on the occurrence of the w i minus 1 at t minus 1 and not on other things. So, the probability chain rule of the observations or the words w 1 to w n uh, is i is equal to 2 to n the probability of w i is dependent on the probability of w 1 to w i minus 1, but that is reduced through the Marco uh, uh, assumption as approximated to p of w i is dependent not upon all the previous states, but only on the just previous states w i minus 1. So, this is the Markov assumption. Now, normally this uh, hidden Markov model is represented using a trellis, this is the trellis diagram. So, you have an initial state S 0 and you uh, from S 0 you can go to S 1 1, S 1 2, S 1 3, S 1 4. Uh, this is just to tell you that it is at state 1, 2, 3, 4 at time 1. Then from S11 you can go to S22, you can go to any of the other 4 that is at time observation time T2 and so on and uh, finally you land up at 0T at ST1, ST2 and so on. So, this is just to tell you that you have a state associated with each of the observation points time it could be. So, O1, O2, 2 OT. So, this is the trellis and uh, we will talk now about the forward backward algorithm. So, the likelihood is measured using any sequence of uh, states of length t this is known as any path method. So, here what we are doing is this is to tell you the actually the, this is to tell you the difference between baum welch and the Vertebi algorithm, but at present what we are trying to say is we are just trying to find out the observation sequence and the probability of the observation sequence whatever may be the path used. So, it is called a any path method. The second option is we choose the PMM by the probability generated using the best sequence of states. So, there we are not bothered about any method, we have to at each and every point we are going to choose the best possible. So, this method is called the best path method. Actually, any path method is the bomb bench and the best method is the uh, vertebrae that is used for decoding and this is used for um, eval, I am sorry, that is used for evaluation and this is used for decoding. Now, let us discuss what is the meaning of this forward probability. Now, what is the probability that given an HMM model lambda at time t the state is S i and the partial observation 0 1 to 0 t has been generated. So, what is saying imagine the trial is you are given the model lambda and now you have a time t and a state i what is the probability of generating the partial observation 0 1 to 0 t up to that you have reached you have come from 0 1 you have reached 0 t and you are in state i what is the probability. So, that particular probability is called the forward probability. Why is it called the forward probability? You are going from 1 up to t. So, lambda t of i the probability of being in state i at time t is equal to the probability that you have seen the observation 0 1 to 0 t and the, the current state is s i given the model lambda. So, this is called the forward probability. So, let us understand the forward probability using the trellis. So, the probability is as we have defined there the lambda t of i that is the, the forward probability of the state i given at a time t ok. So, t is the what we want to find out we should have t minus 1 if you have to find out t. So, alpha t of j ok that is you are going from 
uh, i to j the probability of going from i to j is uh, alpha t minus 1 of i a i j b j 0 t. I will explain what this means. The probability of being in st uh, state j at time t is nothing but the uh, forward probability of having reached t minus 1 with state i and there being a transition probability a i j that is transition probability of uh, from i to j and the probability that the the emission probability at the jth state is 0 t. I will repeat this you have at t minus 1 you have alpha of t minus 1 is 1, alpha of t minus 1 is 2, alpha t minus n is whatever. So, now what we are trying to do is from 1 you go to j, from 2 you go to j, from n you go to j. So, that is why we have 1 to n. Now, we want to find out uh, what is the forward probability that at time t you will be in the state j given that at the pre you are going to take a summation of all those probabilities and you are going to sum it. So, that what are we doing by summing, what probability are we summing? We are summing the probability of having reached at t minus 1, having reached all, each of these states and the transition probability that what is the transition probability of a i a 1 j a 2 j. So, this 1 2 to n is the, uh, is the states that we are associating at t minus 1. So, you have at t minus 1 you are at 1 then you take a transition 1 to j and you have landed at b and then you are also given that the observation at that particular point in t is, uh, is uh, o, o t. So, we are also looking at what at each state having an omission I mean emission probability of b of j. So, this is the forward probability. So, you can see that you are doing a summation operation of all the forward probabilities that you have seen up to t minus 1 and then taking a summation of that along with uh, summation of each of the states along with its transition probability and the final emission probability. So, now determine the probability that a particular sequence of symbols O was generated by that model. So, what you are going to do is given that the, uh, the, the particular sequence uh, Q is generated by the model M, given the model M this is a sequence. The first one is, so let us assume the sequence is Q1 to Qt. So, initially first it is you will start with the initial probability Q1, then from t is equal to 1 to t minus 1 you look at the a q t to q t plus 1 is equal to pi q 1 into a of that is a transition probability from q 1 to q 2 q 2 to uh, q and so on up to q t minus 1 to uh, q t. Similarly, the probability that given the that say uh, sequence okay, that uh, sequence and the model this is the transition sequence. So, you are given the transition sequence given that yes, transition sequence and the model we are now looking at the probability of the observation. So, t is equal to 1 to t probability of seeing the observation given q t comma m which is nothing but the emission probability of q 1 giving observation 1, q 2 giving 2, q 2 giving o t. So, finally, given the what is the probability of the see q is the state. O is the observation. Okay. Q is always one, uh, one state to another is determined by the uh, transition probability. Given a state the observation coming out is given that is the way of understanding it emission probability. And then what is the probability of the output sequence given the model is given by the, the two combined together probability of the observation given Q that is the state sequence and the model and the probability of the state sequence given the model. So, this is how we define evaluation. So, this is a forward recursion problem as you would have understood. You calculate the forward probability uh, one set of probability go to the next using this go to the next using this. So, that is the forward probability. So, uh, this we have already discussed. So, alpha uh, what is the probability of being in state i at time t? is nothing but the probability of observing 0 1 to 0 t being in state i given the model. So, initialization is alpha 1 of i that is um, the probability of seeing uh, the first uh, observation uh, at the, uh, the, 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 the at time t 1 uh, at the state i what is the probability forward probability that is nothing but the initial probability of the state i 
and the probability of observing or uh, emitting the observation O1 uh, at the state i. So, that is the initial that can be given without calculating anything else everything is given to us the model gives you that pi and b. So, nothing is needed. Now, for alpha t plus 1 of j this is what we said you have to take the summation of all the previous uh, states and their transition probability that is the first uh, part of the summation into you have reached j. So, you are in the previous t minus 1 you are in the i th, uh, you are in all the state i that is what is that i summation is giving you and then you have reached the state j. Now, in the state j what is the probability of emitting 0 t plus 1 ok uh, given jth state. So, at the state jth what is the probability that is your emission probability and the termination condition is you have uh, reached you have seen all the, uh, the probability you have seen the complete sequence and you are at i and uh, the model is given. So, it is nothing but i is equal to 1 to n alpha t of i. So, this is the forward recursion problem. So, you are starting with 0 or 1 and reaching the teeth. Now, let, let us understand the hidden Markov model using a small numerical example. This is a trivial example it is taken from this particular uh, small uh, pdf. So, you, you are trying to find out the probability of the observation sequence r or the red, red, green, blue given the model. Okay. Now, the model has been defined for you. How have they defined the model? They have told you that the initial probability of uh, you have 3 states S1, S2, S3 and uh, the, the probability of being in S1 is 1, the probability of being in S2 is 0 and the probability of being in S3 is 0 and you are also given the transition probability 1 to 2 you can see there for example, 1 to 1 is 0 0.5, 1 to 2 is 0 0.4 and 1 to 3 is 0 0.1 like that it is given. Now, and you are also given the RGB there. So, that you understood what is the initial probability you are given the transition probability and on the side of that as a row matrix you have been given the uh, probability of emission. So, being in 1 what is the probability of emitting red is 0 0.6, green is 0 0.2, blue is 0 0.2. In state 2 it is 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 for red, green and blue. Similarly, at th the third state it is 0 0.0, 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. So, this is the emission probability. So, the 3 things is the model the initial probability, the transition probability and the emission probability. Now, let us take the problem. So, 1 uh, now you, you can only be in state 1 as initial probability because that is what the others give 0, but just to completeness say 1 now what have you observed r. So, you have to take only the uh, from the emission you have to take only what uh, the probability of that particular state emitting red. So, 1 in, uh, initial probability into the probability of um, emitting red in that state. So, 1 into 0 0.6 similarly from the second uh, column matrix the second state probability of emitting is 0 0.2, but the probability of being in the initial is 0 probability is 0 and this is also 0. So, that is about 1. Now, this is the interesting part. Now, from uh, the first state ok what is the probability of going to uh, you have, no, you have got a state first state and you have got an r that is you have got red ok. So, from 1 to 1 the probability is 0 0.5 and the probability of emitting r is 0 0.6 ok. From 1 to 2 the probability is 0 0.4 and the probability of emitting red is 0 0.2 from 1 to 3 the probability is 0 0.1 and the probability of emitting red is 0. So, with that you calculate. Similarly, for the first state, second state probability the, you cannot go to 1 from 2 to 2 it is 0 0.6 probability of red is 0.2 that remains the same. And then from uh, 2 to 3 it is 0 0.4 and the probability of emitting is 0. So, you have those values ok. Now, please note that the, for example, in the first one there is no summation, but in the second and third ok 0.048 value is a summation of the 2 values that you have got that is from uh, 1 to 2 and 2 to 2. And similarly, the third one though it is 0 is uh, uh, 1 to 3 and 2 to 3 like that you take a summation find out that into the probability. So, that is how you get and similarly you go on and finally, you see you have probability 0, 0, 0018. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 and 0, 1, uh, 5, 3, 7 that is the probability of generating R R G B given the model. So, and the transition that happened ok. 
So, in the naive approach the forward algorithm takes on somewhere about the order of n square t computations. The backward probability is analogous to the forward probability just it is in the other direction. What is the probability that given a HMM param, uh, model lambda and the given state t is i the partial observation t plus 1 to t is generated. It is not given 0 to 1 what is generated. So, beta of t in the ith state is the probability of generating 0 t plus 1 to t. Remember previously we were doing 0 1 to t in observation 1 to observation t here we are saying 0 of t plus 1 to t given that you are in state i si and you are given lambda. So, the uh, we are not going to go too much into the details, but it is similar to the previous algorithm, but you are going from the backward state that is all ok. So, this is the algorithm and uh, the initialization here is uh, you do not have uh, beta t of i is equal to 1 because you are starting from there and the induction is similar to what you would do, but it is in the backward direction you will find t for finding t you have to take t plus 1. Remember previously we used to find t by taking t minus 1 here you have to find t that is you are taking all the states from t minus 1 and to find t here to find t you are taking all the states from t plus 1. So, the termination condition is give what is the probability of the observation given uh, sequence given the model is given by this. The problem the second problem is decoding. Now, decoding is given the observation sequence the same that we were given previously and the HMM model. Now, we do not want to find the probability of the observation sequence we want to find the probability of the state sequence the hidden state sequence. So, what we want to find is the most probable state sequence for that we use the Waterby's dynamic programming algorithm and uh, the solution to problem 1 evaluation gives us the sum of the all the parts through the HMM efficiently. For the second problem which is the decoding we want to find the path with the largest probability we do not want all the we have we are given everything we do not want that. So, given a set of symbols O determine the most likely sequence of hidden states Q that led to these observations. So, we want to find the sequence Q is equal to Q1 to Qt which maximizes the probability of uh, the Q that is given the set of observations what is the most uh, maximum sequence that gave me this uh, observations. So, in other words we want to find Q dash such that is Q dash is a uh, sequence of states it could be a number of sequence of states we want to find that particular sequence which may maximizes my probability given the observation and uh, sequence of observations and the model. So, the most probable state sequence is what is this question to our problem 2. If we know the identity of qi then the most probable sequence on n, i plus 1 to n does not depend on the observation before ti that is of course the idea. So, the Waterby algorithm is an analysis of internal processing result and the best most likely state sequence is what is given. Uh, so, this is a dynamic programming technique this is similar to the bomb welch except that here we are considering the, um, max, the, the state sequence that gives me the maximum. So, the Waterby algorithm similar to computing forward probabilities, but instead of summing up our transition from the incoming state we did a summation here what we do we will do compute the maximum. So, you can see the difference there that was the forward uh, there where we did a summation of the previous states here what we do we do not do a summation we select the state that gave me the maximum ok. So, the maximum i that gave me that that transition alone I am considering that is the major difference between the two. So, in that decoding you have the forward procedure you have the reverse uh, backward procedure and then you do a combination of the two. So, the Waterby algorithm initialization is very very similar to uh, what we did for bomb welch induction except for the uh, you find the maximum probability state sequence from so, so suppose I am going to this state which is the state that gave me the maximum only that I will consider I will not take the summation that is the major difference and so uh, I have uh, that I do that for each and every uh, state. So, now I will get a particular state sequence only I will not get all the states. So, the termination is of course, when I reach the teeth uh, observation and I will read out the path. So, I will have probably S1 uh, SI which is the next uh, state which is the next state at time T1, T2, T3. So, S1, S2, S1, S3 so on. So, that is the best uh, sequence that I will find. So, probably that uh, for each of those observations which is the best state sequence. So, that is the uh, Waterby algorithm as you can see 
uh, I will be going through one particular path only. I will if the best path ending in QT equal to SJ goes through QT minus 1 SI, then it should coincide with best path ending at that. That is the basic general idea that we had. And uh, so this is the maximum. So delta J of T is equal to maximum of X1 to X T minus 1. And that is x1 to xt minus 1, 0 to I mean observation 1 to observation t minus 1, xt is equal to g and this. The state sequence will maximize this probability seeing the observation up to t minus 1, landing at state j and seeing the observation at that state t is what we are talking about. So, that is the maximum this we have already spoken about. So, this is an example, the previous example itself, but we choose the maximum. So, out of these three, 0 0.6 was the maximum. The next is so you go from S1, S1, S2, S3, whichever is the maximum. So, it is similar to the previous except that we do not take the summation, we take the maximum. I think this will explain it to you. So, in this particular module, we have explained the three issues. We have discussed the baum walsh algorithm for evaluating valuation using given the model and also how to find the best sequence which would give me the observation given the model which was called decoding for which we use the word to be algorithm. Thank you.